Hi there. In this video, I'm going to be going over the process of updating Text Mesh Pro from a previous release that was using the inline graphics uh, manager to the latest release, which is uh, at this current time, release 0 0.1.54 beta 4, which includes now support for multi fonts and sprites and the fallback font system. And as a result of the addition of those new features, the inline graphic manager and the inline graphic child, all that stuff has been replaced. So I'm going to go over the process of how we update to the latest release. So the first thing we're going to do is, uh, since this is a user project and I'm uh, suggesting that we upgrade to the latest release to fix an issue, I'm going to go over what the issue is. And at some point, uh, Unity changed some of the handling of basically the 2D rec mask and it could result in the sprite itself not getting masked. So I'm in play mode as I scroll you can see the text is getting masked but the sprite is not. And this is what we're trying to fix. Now I could track down uh, what code changes I made over time but in this case it's easier to just update to the newest release plus there's tons of additional functionality and fixes that have occurred over time so this is a good opportunity to update to the new version. So in order to update the new version the first thing we're gonna have to do is delete the text mesh pro folder completely. Now this and why do we need to do this? Well Unity's asset importer is not an installer. All it can do is add new files. It can look at if a file exists and replace it or add new files. But if in a project you renamed any files, if you if some files are no longer in use or whatever, there's no file management. So uh, it can get really messy. So it's just easier to replace the whole text mesh pro folder. So removing the text mesh pro folder is fine as long as you didn't save anything in it right so if you saved any font assets material presets or any sprite assets by deleting it you'll get rid of those so make sure you back those up before you do anything now in the case of this project uh, these assets are sitting in fonts and the text mesh pro sprite that we want to work with is sitting right here so we don't have to worry about that in this case the other thing to pay attention to before you delete the text mesh pro folder is the tmp settings file does sit inside the text mesh pro folder and it contains the settings that as a user you've set so as you import the new package it will complete well as you delete it that's going to go away and as you import the new package all these things will be overwritten so it's important to pay attention to what settings you had there at some point i'll make sure there's a cleaner transition from one to the other i'm going to have to use like editor preferences and save stuff there i'm not sure yet how to handle it cleanly but just be mindful of this at this time and if i look at this user project uh, there's a different default sprite asset that's being assigned here and there is no sprite asset assigned by default so let's go ahead and get rid of our text mesh pro folder i'm not even gonna clear the scene i'll just leave everything open i'm gonna go to assets import and i'm gonna import a custom package i have tons of them and the one we're interested in is the one that's on the user form right now which is beta 0 0.154 beta 4 and that's the one we want so as it imports, it's all in. I'm going to click import. I won't select or unselect anything. We'll just bring it in. And we wait patiently for it to be done. Now it is done. I'm going to select the text object. And nothing renders. And we're going to cover that. And here we can see that we still have an inline graphics manager, which is now disabled, which Text Mesh Pro did that. And we still have the inline graphic child and we have this other new TMP sub mesh UI object. So right now, because I kept the project open, it's in a weird state. So what I'm gonna do is just enter play mode and in awake text mesh pro will realize, oh wait, there's an inline graphic manager. Let's get rid of it as it did. Hey, we have an inline child, nah, let's get rid of it and let's replace it by this new child object that contains the sprite. So let's exit play mode because we don't need that anymore. Um, and let's move on and look at our sprite. So first we're going to make sure that this actually fixed the issue in terms of the 2D rec mask and the masking. So let's enter play mode and let's scroll up and we can see that both our text and our sprite are getting masked correctly. 
But if we look at this sprite, this is not the clock sprite that the user was using. So we need to fix that. So how do we do that? And why do we not have the right sprite here? Well, the sprite tag has been changed in, I think, beta 3, 0.154. At some point, I changed it. Can't remember exactly the version number. But the sprite format now, since multi-font was added, has changed because we need to be able to reference now the sprite asset that we want to use. So when you were saying sprite equals zero, it's basically referring to the default sprite asset that's in the TMP settings file. Sprite equals zero is the same as saying sprite space index equals zero. So this is now referencing this one. Now if I go to that sprite asset, and I won't navigate, I'll just type its name because I know what it's called. The first sprite is called uh, 03A5. Uh, the reason why it's called this awkward name is there was a bug uh, in previous release where if your sprite was named with numerical numbers instead of letters, it would not work. So this is uh, leftover of me testing. But it's called 03A5. We're going to go reference it by name and we'll use that 03A5 name just to make sure everything works. And I'm covering the different forms of the sprite tag. So 03A5 is the name. Uh, make sure it's in quotes. It can work without the quotes, but it can also get tripped up. So always use the quotes when you're referencing a name anyway. So now we can see that we're correctly referencing that sprite. Now let's go use the user's sprite. So first thing we're gonna do is we need to fix a few things. So if I go to the TMP settings file, we'll see that some stuff has been added. So here the default sprite asset is Arial. In the case of the user project, it was referencing this other font here called Beast. The font fallback system is new and uh, was added here. I won't cover that, but there's videos and information about that in the patch notes and lots of stuff. New properties were added to the text object, including control over whether or not a sprite will be tinted when you're changing the vertex colors or not. Uh, there's also a tint attribute that you can use in the sprite tag, and there's a separate video that covers all this stuff. Uh, our default sprite asset here is referencing the one that's here with the smiley face and text mesh pro. So you can reassign one there or leave or put none. And now what's important here is you can specify the location of where your sprite assets will be located. Now, since the sprite assets will now be referenced in the text, I need to be able to load them at runtime. So in order to load them at runtime, they have to be located inside of a resources folder. And in this case, uh, if this wasn't there, they would have to be contained inside resources and they'd have to be there. In this case, to keep things neatly organized, I'm saying they have to be contained in a resource folder, inside a sprites folder, and then we'll be fine. Uh, then there's other settings here. Uh, I won't cover those, but since we're focusing on a sprite stuff, so this is the change I need to make. So let's go back to our text object. Let's go to the sprite asset here, and let's move it where it needs to be. So we're gonna need to create a resources folder and resources and inside of this we need to create our sprites folder now that this is done we're going to select i'm going to expand this so we can see it and i'm going to move this sprite asset into resources sprite and that will now allow me to reference it so let's go back to our text and now let's look at how we can reference it. So sprite equal in quote, that's the name. Uh, and before I do that, let me fix this because that 03A5 won't exist. Let's switch back to using an index. So the sprite name is sprite asset underscore clock. And as we do this, uh, we type the name, we get this error. Hey, it says the variable, material, blah, 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 sprite asset doesn't, is not assigned. Now, this is important, and this is the result of the fact that at some point I had to switch over because of changes that Unity made in, I think, 5.3 or something related to the 2D rec mask. I had to add a default material for the sprite asset itself. So here, as you can see, your sprite asset or this sprite asset has none reference there. 
Now, you could try to go pick a material, but that won't work because the material that's assigned here has to specifically reference the sprite asset texture itself. So how do we fix that easily? Well, you can go to the gear menu here. I added a new context menu, which sadly we can't see because it's outside the screen. But the third option here that's highlighted off screen says add default material. When you click that, it automatically adds and creates a new material that references the texture here, which makes everything work. Now, it's still not updated here because TextMeshPro has no clue that this has been changed. Now, through the magic of entering play mode, it will basically fix all these references and make it happy and it will work correctly as we go forward. So now we can see that it's referencing the current sprite. So let's enter play mode and make sure that this is working correctly and it's all good. Now let's go and test this. We're gonna select the sprite asset and it's called clock. So we're gonna go make sure that it also works when we call it clock. So we're gonna use name equal and in quote again clock and we can see that this is working correctly so now we've successfully migrated our sprite asset to work with uh, the latest release of text mesh Pro. now there's another part i want to cover uh, there's another way we could have done this which we could have regenerated the sprite asset on top of itself so what does that mean well i can go to wherever the sprite was located in the user project which was in sprites here uh, and if I navigate down this whole thing this is where the sprite is and if I right click on it and I say uh, create hopefully it's not gonna be off screen sprite asset this will create a new sprite asset based on the clock which has that material referenced automatically okay but the in this case I didn't write it over it because it's in a different location I created a completely new one right so in this case we're looking at overriding it and it will only override it if when I created the other one is sitting here so just for the sake of this uh, demo I'm gonna take this sprite asset and move it wherever the other one is which is here and I guess it's not called the same name so now I'm uh, experimenting here I'll call it clock and now I'm gonna override the clock on top of the clock so create sprite asset uh, blah, 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 right here and now we've recreated it and now we end up with a duplicate it's like whoa how did that happen and why do we have a duplicate well in order to preserve the names when you do that with an existing sprite asset in previous releases, TextMeshPro wasn't using or referencing the sprite itself, uh, which it does now in order to try to preserve the names and figure out if there's duplicates or not. So in the case of this asset, it didn't have certain fields already filled in. And how do we figure that out? And this is like we're diving deep now into troubleshooting and how we can fix uh, sprite assets. So if I switch to debug mode, and I expand the sprite info list and I look at both sprites, you're going to see that the newly created one does reference the clock here under sprite. But the old one here had nothing that it referenced. So as it tried to override it, it's trying to look at, hey, do I have a sprite called clock that already exists that references the sprite called clock? And since it had none, well, it created a new one. So this is the reason why this happened. If before recreating on top of it, I had gone in here and manually selected the clock sprite, then it would not have overwritten it. Now, this is a challenging way to kind of fix that. So let me show you new functionality that I added. In the latest release of Text Mesh Pro, you can easily add and remove sprite references from the sprite asset. To do so, you can basically select the sprite asset and click minus which means we've now gotten rid of it, or if we want, we can add a new one. And here's another cool thing about being able to add a new one. If I select nothing, we've only got one, but if I select nothing, the last one will be duplicated. If I select one, whichever one is selected will be the one that's duplicated. So now we've added a new one and we'll give it a new name. We'll call it clock big. And I'm gonna change its scale. So what I did here, is instead of 
adding a second texture in my texture atlas, which would take more texture space, just to have the same thing show up at a different size, you can now have multiple references, because here we're referencing some pixels or sprite located at 0, 0 of a width of 256 by 256, and then TextMesh Pro will use the following settings for it. Here I'm saying, hey, there's another one called Clock Big. It's still in the same location, but this one has different properties. So if we go to our text object, instead of referencing Clock, we reference Clock Big, you'll see that now it's the one that's at 2x scale. So this is like a cool feature that's in there to make managing your spread assets easier. So I believe I've covered all the different aspects of the conversion over to the latest release of TextMesh Pro. I've covered how to fix the spread asset in terms of adding the material reference that is missing or the default material. And I've covered the sprite tag in terms of how to use it. There's also a new video that covers just the sprite tag itself and some of this information. So this is it for this video. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.